you know, I started tracking the record in 2007. Um, it's you know, over four years ago at this point. Um, we got pretty far too. We got all the way to the mixing stage. I'd say the record was probably about 85% done at that point, just musically, really. Just, uh, we had the wrong lineup at the time. <laughs> but, um, you know, so we kind of had to put the, put the record on ice for a bit and just try to figure out what the hell we were doing. And, you know, that was, that was kind of a hard thing. Because we were so, you know, was, especially me, because I was tracking everything and, you know, uh, it, was, it was definitely a weird time. <laughs> Um, but when Joey came back into the band and like it just injected this energy and this, this new life into it and, and you know at that point uh, when he gave the green light and he you know felt comfortable on you know singing on the, on the songs it, it kind of happened really quick like a, like a tornado it felt like at the end and we got everything finished um, you know fairly quick and we're really proud of it. Cool. Yeah, but, uh, two, two of the songs from, from the original batch were, were recut. Actually, three songs were recut. Um, Fight Until Fight Fight You Can't, a song called In The End, which was originally called Down Goes The Sun. The Priest song. Uh, yeah, the Judas Priest song, which was originally called Maniacal. Uh, Fight Until You Can't musically stayed the same. It's just that because we've been playing it live, you know, with Joey, we kind of felt like we played it with a little more energy. And that was the only song we even played as a band. Yeah, all, so. exactly. So Charlie went in and recut the drums and played some different fills and different stuff. And it, you know, it, it, in the end of it, it had just a lot more energy to it than the original version. And uh, down goes the uh, down goes the sun was turned into in the end, which is kind of rewritten and tweaked. And uh, it's a lot of new tracking on you know, this too. I see there's a ton of new tracking stuff going on, like you know, a lot of guitars and new bass. You did the whole bass. Yeah. Thing. Frankie, Frankie replayed the bass. He switched amp companies, and he was re really happy with, with his new amp. He got inspired, and he said, yeah. and he also just wanted to get into rip outs and do stuff. Yeah. And you were, you didn't have all your leads really together yet. You were probably yes. they were all they were all done except for I mean I'm telling you most of the record was done. It's just, uh, it just didn't Judas, sound like Judas it, Priest yeah. in the end and uh, Fight Until You Can't. Those had to be had to be recut for the yeah. most part. We, we, you know, we, we were tweaking <coughs> till the 11th hour, you know, when Jay started mixing, we were still tweaking and adding parts and overdubs and trying different stuff, going back and forth. Yeah. It was, kind it was of heavy re pre-production kind of thing, goes yeah. in phase, you know. For me, I've been up and down so much, I I don't even know what that feeling is, you know, because I, I kind of disregard a lot of it because I never have any any say in the way. It just seems to play itself out. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, why would you even bother me or why you go through that? And I say, you know what, I, I just don't let it bother me as much. I mean, yeah, you want to know what's going on. You want to be, I'd rather be set in one spot. You know, I don't need to have to be back and forth. I think everybody gets so confused. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it feels great. I, I, you know, I, like anything else in life, I, I, I feel like things are things always happen for a reason, and I feel like this band needed to go through all this crazy shit to get to where we're at now, and, and the vibe is really good, and we're really psyched on this new record, and everything feels good. I mean, when we're playing on stage, it's, it's a blast, so, yeah. For me, no, I just, I've been the same from day one, you know, as far as, you know, nothing's been pre-planned and, you know, you don't worry about it. I mean, obviously you want to, you want to appear to be, um, you know, look like you represent what you're doing in all ways, you know, but we horse around. I mean, I like to have fun, so, you know, that's, that's a lot of that stuff comes around. Yeah, maybe some clothing. <laughs> Became a little bit flash, but even then, you know, who, who's to say what's not right for someone to wear some things and stuff? Yeah. You know, cool. Um, um, Robbie feels like that, you know. I mean, you you really haven't been in. I wasn't there. With you were in more in the serious mode, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I came into the band when when. Just like your time, you know? Yeah, when things started 
getting a little more serious with Anthrax. That's when I when I came into the band. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just think you know one of the main things about us, you know, we really. Joey touched on it a second ago, but we really have fun when we're out there playing. It's, it's real. It's not put on. It's not, you know, fake. We're not going through the motions. Every show we give it, you know, 2,000 percent. It's like, you know. But we were serious too. I mean, there's the, yeah. it's over. Sometimes it becomes very serious yeah. to the point where like, we're like, look at this. Look at it. Yeah. But a lot, of, a lot of bands, you know, I'm not going to name any names, but there, there are definitely quite a few bands out there that take themselves too seriously to the point where you, you watch it and it's kind of like, it just has a stale vibe to it, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, for me it's, it's, you know, I hate, I hate seeing that stuff, so. so. There's a certain competition that goes with that kind of thing too, which you know, I really never got caught up in myself. You just do your thing and it'll play itself out. Yeah, exactly. Take to that place. You know, how do you get in there? You know, I mean, it's amazing we're actually going in that building to play. You know? It's kind of like the dream gig. I, I, I think one of the major things is, you know, we have the new record coming out. Uh, you know, day before, so we're gonna we're gonna play a few new songs, which we haven't done on these other shows. So that's a pretty big deal, I think, for us it is. At least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it certainly is. When we played it last night. It was. Kind of a gas to play new tune, you know. Out of you know three days or three runs, four runs through it, you know, basically. Yeah. Yeah, not every show. Well, not every show, but we they yeah. they started doing that every night. Yeah, you know the, the thing is with that, it's like you know I think the Metallica guys would. You know, when, at these big four shows, they would they want everyone to come out at the end because it's just it's it's awesome. It's just a great vibe and it's a lot of fun. But um, you know, especially in Europe, sometimes between the four bands, like the travel arrangements and stuff, like that that's that's the Metallica encore. So it's it's way late, at, you know, at, in the night. Some people have to some bands have to catch early flights, depending on how stuff is booked. So you know, we didn't get to do it every night, but we we try to do it as you know if we can. <laughs> much they do, but you know, obviously. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Don't you know, need to cover every place with that kind of shit, right? I mean, you don't need to do a you know, two months worth of it, three months worth of that yeah. thing. But I will say it does. There, there does seem to be a, a demand for it. I mean, yeah, just fans are just going nuts over it. You know, yeah. it's great. It's great. It'd be a shame not to be able to do more of some of it. You know, whether it's you know a good handful more. Of course, we don't know saying I'm at it right now. You know, just wait and tell. But kind of figures when they want to do stuff. And of course, we're always seem to be ready for it. I make everyone play it and play it and play. It. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, one of the, you know, I was just talking about this the other day in a, in a different interview, but one of the. Uh, one of the main challenges with, with a band like Anthrax at this point in their career is everybody lives in a different place. So, and everyone wants to do their parts close to home. So it's kind of like, you know, I basically, uh, I built this mobile rig with all, you know, my favorite stuff in it and I could basically go anywhere in track. So, um, you know, we did drums in Chicago. Uh, there's Charlie lives in Chicago now. Did Scott's guitars out in LA. Uh, did my guitars out in LA, some of my guitars in New York. Um, Joey actually did his vocals with Jay Rustin out in LA as well. Um, it's just like we, we're doing things in all different different places and just making sure all the sounds are consistent and everything adds up, you know what I mean? You do guitar in one place and bass somewhere else. We did Frank's bass in New York, in, in uh, Bronxville, New York. Um, yeah, just making sure all the sounds you know, match up and line up. And that's that's actually a pretty pretty challenging thing. Um, 
the other thing with with a band like Anthrax is this band's been around so long, and every, you know everyone's been doing this forever, and there's, there's so much experience there, and you know they they, they definitely know how to, how to make records, so and, and how to play on records. It, it's just a matter of capturing the energy of what the band is about and, and getting the performances, you know, making sure the tempos are cool, the energy is right. I think it's going to be a little bit more in, in depth that song. It's a long piece, you know. Okay. But I think it'll be fine. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to be a demand. Yeah, yeah. People want to hear that, that tune. It seems like we're, we're going to be doing it. We need, we need to just get in the room and yeah, rehearse we'll it. <laughs> that tune in particular has a sort of uh, melancholy vibe to it, which you know, definitely, you know, musically, I'm talking about it. Lends, it lends itself to to the. What the lyrics are saying, and what the depth of the song. Go you know. play it again. <laughs> All right, well, hey, I personally, for me, I mean, obviously, you're gonna you're gonna take on touring this record, which you're gonna what you have to do. You know, kind of have to kind of make it move, keep it rolling. And, Put the band back up on a on the stand, you know. And it would be nice to have. So I, actually, there was another song that we almost tried to get one more song down here, which you know maybe that will lead us into going in a little sooner, and maybe bring bring some more music if, if, you know, if it's possible instead of waiting at this time, even though it wasn't deliberate. But you know, hopefully we'll be able to move. But before we used to kind of work in get one in within a year's time. You know, instead of, unless somebody doesn't have any, you know, if nobody has ideas and everybody's like, ah, I'm not really up for it right now, I don't think so. Maybe we won't. Sure, we're going to tour. Tour like crazy if we can. Yeah, I mean, right, right now is a real exciting time for, for Anthrax. You know, the, the, the Big Four thing, I have to say, really, you know, gave us all a kick in the ass to, to you know, get our, get our shit together, you know, especially for this album and, and just get it, getting everything, everything sorted out, and getting, getting back on track. You know? Timing-wise, yeah, I mean, God, I mean, everything's just falling out of place. Yeah, in that way. Absolutely, and I mean, there, like I said earlier, there's weird stuff that we went through. You know, dating back from when, you know when we started recording the album. And, but again, everything happens for a reason, and it's, it's an amazing time right now for this band. We can't, we just can't wait to get out there and start playing these new songs for the fans. You know? it's, Excited about it. That's definitely diverse, isn't it? I mean, yeah. You know, you can't see everything. It's hard to, to really kind of pinpoint everything. But I've been seeing a lot of young, a lot of young, young kids with right? the family, with dads, with yeah. moms, parents, you know. Or with an older brother, you know, bringing the young kids, you know, it's like, wow. It's cool, it's definitely it's a cool so thing. Cool. Very cool.